بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Your Royal Highnesses Mr. Peter Nelson Distinguished guests our esteemed faculty and staff and the pride and headline of our day, the class of 2022. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Alf, Alf Mabruk. I'm truly honored and humbled to be speaking in front of you today. I'll tell you briefly about my journey since graduating from King's and then share two stories about the two people who've had the greatest influence on my life. I graduated in 2011 the second graduating class of King's Academy. I was the first Jordanian to attend Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut. I graduated with honors in game theory and was excited about starting my career in renewable energy at a financial services firm in New York City. But to get a working visa, the so-called H-1B, was a lottery process where 60,000 applicants were randomly selected out of over 250,000 each year, and I wasn't one of the lucky ones. That never made sense to me, and time was running out. Eventually, my lawyer said, you have two options, or else you have to leave the country. Get married, or invent something so important to the US that it had never been invented before and serves the national interest. So I chose the easy way out, and I invented something. <laughs> Thank you. At least one person in the crowd isn't laughing. I'm sorry, Mama. <laughs> I had developed an algorithm that solved a problem the US renewable market was facing 10 years ago, a methodology to assess the value of renewable energy credits 10 or 20 years into the future. Eight years later, I am now the youngest portfolio manager in my industry with over $5.6 billion of assets under management. at Alice Power, one of the largest independent power producers in the US. On your next journey, you will be challenged. You will be facing fierce competition from young thinkers from all over the world. You will have high days and low days where nothing makes sense or life seems unfair to you or perhaps it's moving too fast. It is okay to be feeling these things. I did. And during my worst days and my best days, I remember two stories that always lifted me up always guided me in the right direction, and always made my darkest night brighter. These are the two stories that I want to share with you from the two most important figures in my life. But ultimately, I encourage you to find your own stories to push you through the good and bad days, because you will need them. Here is my first story, and it starts with this lesson. When it comes to your right to learn, be shameless. I was, raised, I was born and raised in Zerka City, 20 miles outside of Amman. My father served over 20 years in the Air Force, and my mom served over 20 years as a teacher in a public school. My father was forced at a young age to leave school and take on a job to help with living expenses and support his younger brother's education. My father knew all too well how important getting an education was, so he made it his mission that his children's fate be different from his. When it came to education, he always delivered no matter the cost. When I was in seventh grade, I had surgery on my left foot and required a special type of footwear, which he bought using almost a third of his monthly salary. He asked the teacher for permission to enter the class to put it on so I didn't miss a single second. So here he was in front of the whole class, sitting down on the ground by my legs and putting on the shoes while I signaling to me to focus all my attention on the teacher in front of me. Some of my classmates were in absolute awe. Some were even looking down and giggling. They had never seen someone so shameless. But he was so determined to have his child's education go uninterrupted, not even for a single second. That picture of my dad sitting on the ground pushes me every day to be absolutely shameless in my pursuit for education. <laughs> to learn and let absolutely nothing and no one stand in the way of that. When I heard about King's Academy in 2007, I wanted in to advance my education and make my dad proud. And just as he taught me all along, I was so locked in on the opportunity. We didn't have internet at home, 
So I used to walk 30 minutes to the nearest Safeway, pay 50 cents an hour to use the internet and submit my application. A few weeks later, I was called in for an interview. My dad, of course, was very supportive, took an unpaid day off and drove me to my interview. And as we were approaching the main gate, his eyes showed a mix of excitement and concern. Yes, this all looks so magical, but also looks very, very expensive. So he looked at me, wanting to comfort me before my interview and said, I'll sell the house, we can do this. <laughs> at that very moment, I thought in my head, now who's going to tell him that selling the house would only cover one semester? <laughs> I spoke very little English at the time and didn't get accepted the first year I applied. So I took English courses over the summer and I applied the following year. My English was better, but still not good enough. I even had a translator during my first meeting with Dr. Mira, but Dr. Mira wasn't going to be bound by a language barrier to know how much I wanted to be here. She had that motherly instinct. So I was accepted and was given a full scholarship to attend. My heart was beating faster and louder than a thousand drums. That day, when I got the call from Kings, I was the second happiest person on earth, second only to my dad. However, he was worried. He was worried that my soon-to-be schoolmates may have resources and means beyond what he could provide, and that would eventually make me feel disadvantaged. But His Majesty had already thought of that. He made sure that within the walls of the school, everybody was equal. Every student wore the same dress code, ate the same food, enjoyed the same room furniture, and was given equal opportunity to succeed. And that brings me to my second story that I want to share with you. When it comes to learning, be humble. In 2009, and as we were approaching the spring break, when most students had plans such as skiing in Switzerland or scuba diving in the Maldives, there was a group of King Scholars who had more tamed plans, but His Majesty was thinking of us. He arranged for all 24 students, a collective from Jordan, Palestine, Iraq, and Afghanistan, to name a few, and flew us in military helicopters to Wadi Rum. We camped overnight with His Majesty, the most memorable night any of us would have. It was March, still chilly outside, hoodie season. The sky over our heads was filled with countless stars, close enough for you to reach and grab them. A perfect night for the king's favorite meal in the desert, zarb. For those unfamiliar, zarb is goat meat and vegetables cooked in a large underground fire pit. His Majesty is sitting with his scholars, plates are full, the smell of zarb is irresistible. A fire pit in the middle, keeping his majesty and the scholars warm while having a conversation. More like a bombardment of questions coming from all directions, with each one of us so eager to hear about the king's perspective on every issue in the world. Sometimes his favorite dish, or the hobbies he has, or the libraries he loves to visit every time he travels to a new place. I was running late, approaching slowly with my plate of zarb. There were no empty seats remaining on the Bedouin sofa. So I eyed a spot on the ground and attempted to make my move and sit down. What happened then was a moment that never left my mind thereafter. His Majesty, a full plate on his hand, and without losing the conversation with everyone else, motioned to me and in a heartbeat gave me his seat and proceeded to sit himself down on the ground by my left leg. Now the inside of me completely froze. I did not know how or what to think, but I recognized this fatherly instinct. I have witnessed it before. The two men that I admire and love more than life itself, many years apart, sought to provide for their children without an ounce of pride. There were no cameras around to capture this moment. This act of kindness was so pure, so humbling, that to this day, I remember it like it happened last night. To this day, it pushes me to be kind and honest to the people around me, no matter the material wealth or power may, one may accumulate. It teaches me to give back to those in need. I can never be thankful enough to the two men that taught me everything and made me the man I am today. This is what keeps me going. This is what I wanted to share with you. Be proud of your achievements, but never stop learning. Never forget those who helped you, your parents, your teachers, and your friends. Help those in need. Go out there and conquer your dreams, and remember, when it comes to learning, be shameless like my beloved father. When it comes to learning, 
be humble like our beloved king. Class of 2022, this is your moment to capture. Congratulations and best of luck to you all. <laughs>